When I'm walking through the world, I find myself surrounded by imagery that has deep meaning yet not outright described. Pictured guidance that subconsciously tells me something without the need of the spoken word or written word. Imagery is powerful. It contains multitudes and comes in so many forms but I think most noticeably in social movements. These symbols are almost always used to create social change, enact emotion, or reform some part of society, but through the power of inner meaning and context, these symbols can ultimately create collateral damage or colossal goodness. This is the semiotics of power and protest. Semiotics are a tool, and they've been impacting human communication since the dawn of time. It's the study of signs and symbols, and their use or interpretation. Besides my personal inner fascination with symbolism and power, I realized that social movements have been so deeply influenced and guided by a sample of lines and shapes. As a clinical psychology student, my studies focus on why the human brain works the way it does. But as a media theory student, my studies focus on how society works the way it does. In the last 150 years, semiotics have created its own language and liberation movements. I want to dissect this from the perspective of both good and evil. To further understand what I mean by this, I decided to conduct a small interest study in which I combined my understanding of specific symbols and the power they have had on our psyche, media, and society through research on their origin and their rise to phenomenon. If there is one symbol that seems to rise above all in power and meaning, the swastika is hard to beat. It has come to be known as a symbol of hate, destruction, anti-Semitism, and most of all, Nazism in Western culture. But the swastika's power goes far beyond what most people in Western society know. However, before I address its power and positivity, I want to first address what it has meant in the last 80 years. Prior to World War II, the Nazi party adopted the symbol as an image for Aryanism or white supremacy. Now with stigmatism installs modernized fear when worn in 2019 in America and Europe. The swastika adorned the arms of soldiers and party members, and as Hitler rose to power, so did the swastika. Through the power of a simple symbol on a business window or a patch on someone's jacket, people were controlled. However, although we in Western society have come to fear a simple shape, its power holds religious strength and intelligence in other parts of the world. In India, walk down any given street in Mumbai and you could see dozens of the shapes adorning doorways, necklaces, and even on documents. The symbol is even referred to as an icon in many parts of Eurasia for its relevance in not only Hinduism, but also Jainism and Buddhism. The swastika is worshipped for being an omniscient or an all-knowing, and people hold this very deeply. It's divide in drastic, yet equally psychologically and socially powerful ways, from which understanding shows exactly how powerful semiotics can be. By just a simple shape, someone can go into immediate shock and fear, or feel the power of God and wisdom on their side. Moving forward into society, we come across another symbol that provides both power and strength to the black struggle. A simple fist. In an article written by Clancy Russell from the University of North Carolina Chapel Hill, Russell discusses the history of the symbol and its impact on society. On October 16, 1968, Tommy Smith and John Carlos, both Olympic athletes, were awarded medals in the 200 meter race. This day would be remembered forever by viewers, reporters, and Olympic officials, not because Smith set a world record with a time of 19.83 seconds, or because these athletes were African American and would have been denied participation in the Olympics up until the arrival of the 20th century. This event is remembered because upon receiving their medals, Smith and Carlos each donned a black glove, and in an attempt to show solidarity and resistance in the face of a number of human rights violations, raised their gloved fists while the national anthem played. In doing so, they not only violated American standards of good manner, but they also started a movement through the power of symbolism. The fist was adopted by the Black Panthers and has since been raised to a level of iconism that few symbols can compete with. The symbol itself has become a meme of sorts, as its replication and influence has reached millions of Americans nationwide. Its simple yet effective design adorns clothing, flags, protest posters, and so much more, and it's 
been popularized by feminists like dorothea hughes, music groups like public enemy, and fellow athletes like colin kaepernick. the last symbol that appears to me in deep understanding with inner semiotic meaning is the hammer, sickle, and the color red. for many americans born during or prior to the era of the cold war, the united states saw these symbols as mortal en enemies as they threatened our democratic capitalist society through secretive spies who had nuclear knowledge, the space race, the power of rapid industrialization, and of course oppression to the people. the color red itself became a fear-driven movement known literally as the Red Scare, first during the 1910s and then again in the 1950s. Red became a way to influence and manipulate Americans into believing communism and socialism were the worst than death. Public trials during this period tracked down Soviet spies, and Senator Pat McCarran introduced the McCarran Internal Security Act of 1950 that was passed by the U.S. Congress and which modified a great deal of laws to restrict civil liberties in the name of security. Yet now, the symbol of the hammer and sickle and the color red have been reclaimed by organizations that stand with communism and Marxism. And although our country is still anti-communism, the symbol adorned many t-shirts and flyers of groups that align themselves with these views. This is noticeable even on the campus of our university. Temple itself has a Marxist club that uses the hammer and sickle as its symbol, and a socialist club that in return uses the black power fist. Symbols have so clearly held large amounts of power in our lives and have the ability to influence so many aspects of how we think and what we do. With the power of semiotics, social movements can spread their message and change how we see a simple shape. Out in the rain, suddenly everything changed They're spreading blankets on the beach 